Hello painters, it's Diane McNaughton here. Welcome to my watercolour painting channel. In this video, I'm going to do a demo of a lovely stormy sky. And in order to do that, I need to talk about mixing beautiful greys. Um, and in my box, my painting box, I've got a few actual greys. I have a Luna Black, that is that one there, which is Daniel Smith. And I have a neutral tint, which is a Windsor & Newton. And there's also Payne's Grey, which I don't have. But if you use these colours in your skies, you're going to get a very flat, almost dirty look to your skies. And you want to have that colour that you see when you look up into a stormy sky. So in order to do that, I'm going to show you how I mix greys, just using my three colours, my red, yellow, blue. I'm going to use permanent carmine, aureolin and French ultramarine. And in order to make the greys, when you mix three colours like this, three primaries, you're going to get a grey of some sort. But in order to make a blue grey, you've got to know how to have more blue, a little bit of red and a little bit of yellow and so on. So I'm going to show you that a variety of mixing greys. How do you decide what shade of grey to mix? Here's a little chart. Well, if you've got a, a bright colour in your painting, it's a good idea to actually surround it with some semi-neutral colour that will really make that bright colour sing. Okay, so I use my colour wheel for this. I have yellow here. If you have a look in the yellow, the complementary colour for yellow is violet. So if I've got a bright yellow, I will make a semi-neutral violet to, to paint near it to make the yellow sing. And again here I have orange. There we go, orange. Complementary to orange is blue. So I made a blue semi-neutral. And with red, it's green, a green semi-neutral. And I'll just paint underneath to show you how I mix those. If I want um, an, a violet semi-neutral, I will take a bit of blue, quite a bit of blue, a bit of carmine, red. Now that is, that is violet, so to t I take a tiny bit of yellow to grey it off. There we go, grey it off. Will never be the same exactly because it's a quite a variety there you go so that's a, a violet now in order to make a blue gray I take a lot of blue and then a little bit of red just a little and a little bit of yellow and I will make a blue gray and then the green gray Okay, it's quite an equal amount of blue and yellow to make the green and then a tiny bit of red to grey it off. There we go. Okay, so it's a good idea to actually play around with your greys and semi-neutrals. They're not all grey, some of them are browny colour. I made a little chart here. Um, mixing with my three colours that I'm using just here, my red semi-neutral, my violet, my blue semi-neutral, my orange, my yellow, my green. So these two are sort of browny colour, but they are greyed off compared to the full strength colour. I'm now going to do uh, paint a stormy sky using these greys. Put that out of the way, and it's loosely based on the sketch that I did. Um, can you see it? Yep, yeah. stormy sky. I was looking through a window from a hotel with this amazing storm that came up, but I think I will do it in uh, landscape mode and see where I go. I'm actually just going to make it up. In preparation for the sky, I'm spraying the paper so that I have sporadic bits of wet area and dry area. It's great for creating clouds because the clouds aren't all hard edged. There are plenty of soft edges and crinkly edges, so spraying is a great thing. I'm just putting my three colours, giving them a spray every now and again to encourage the flow um, of mixing on the paper. So I do a little bit of mixing on the plate, but or the palette, but mostly on the paper so that I can get the variety of greys 
So I'm dropping a little bit of yellow there and I lift up my board and let the, the colours run. It is all very wet at the moment. It looks so, I wish it would dry like this, but of course it does dry much paler. Anyway, um, this is one layer. I'm trying to get the sky in one layer. Um, if it's too pale, I can actually paint it in two. I'm now bringing the sky down into the land, the same colours, because I want the clouds to touch the top of that hill that I'm creating there. So the same colours, bringing them into the land. Um, I will do another wash on the land. I'm just going to do a first wash here, let it dry, and then come on with a little bit more detail. My paper is now dry and I've just sprayed the top of the hill there so that when I come with this next layer it'll merge into that cloud nicely. Now I'm creating a thing called um, aerial perspective. I want to create distance so I've left those two little bits uh, of the hills unpainted so that they look as if they're going off into the distance. And then I'm painting a middle area here and then I'm going to come in with um, an a even closer hill in the foreground to give that three-dimensional look of distance that is so lovely in landscape paintings, if you can try and, and create that. I'm, there's my foreground there, which is a sort of a hill. It's just a bit like the Yorkshire Dales, I think. That's the sort of idea I'm trying to get here um, with sort of distance. Um, trees and bushes. I'm not painting anything specific. This is uh, quite free, um, slightly abstracted, um, just creating little doodles that could look like trees and bushes. I uh, haven't got a reference in front of me. I'm just playing with the paint really, which is such fun to do. I really recommend you have a go with this, this type of painting. Now I'm just going to let the, lift the board, sorry I, I'm lifting it out of the camera range and I've actually just dropped a little bit of water into that and let it um, run so that it might granulate and it's, you know, it's a little bit of a risk but who knows, it might work. And then I'm going to let this dry and then have a look. The painting's now dry, it was a very quick demonstration demonstrating mixing of greys. I'll just put that closer so you can have a look. Variety of yellows, blues, reds, etc. in the sky. Please click on the links to view my other videos relating to colour. I hope you enjoyed this video.